Good afternoon all. I've got quite a setup here on my bench this afternoon because I've been working on this LM3915 uh, bar graph, logarithmic bar graph indicator. They call it a peak program meter, uh, which is an ancient term that broadcasting uh, companies used to use for the monitoring devices to monitor sound levels. Now I've made a few changes to this board um, which now requires 5 volts, which is here on red and black, and 12 volts. Uh, you might think that's a bit of a backward step because previously this only needed one power supply between 9 and 12 volts. Now it needs two, but I've done that because that's how the ETI vocoder project is doing it. Uh, so I'm using the 5 volts and 12 volts outputs on this multi-voltage power supply, this split rail power supply. Uh, I've got plus and minus 12 volts going to the plus and minus 12 volt sides of this little op-amp circuit. And uh, this op-amp circuit is this. It's the precision full wave peak detector uh, circuit that was actually in the LM3915 datasheet, but it's an identical circuit to the one in the ETI vocoder which they're using to drive the uh, PPM meter, the peak program meter. So uh, I can switch that in and out by moving a wire across. Now I also wanted a preamp for my microphone. Uh, here's the microphone. Let me switch it off. It's the uh, Kongin microphone. It's about $5, I think. Uh, but uh, this is going into this preamp. This is actually the uh, karaoke preamp. So it's got the echo feedback thing. Now I'm powering this separately from two sets of uh, Eneloop batteries, one for plus 10 volts approximately and one for minus 10 volts, mainly so that I didn't have a spaghetti of wires coming from this power supply and going across to here, but also because I'm not entirely sure how much current this takes and how heavily it would load this. I've not got any heat sinks on this at the moment. And uh, so without further ado, I'm speaking into the microphone now uh, quite closely. I can add a bit of echo in if I want. There's some uh, echo and I can uh, change the uh, echo delay time. But that's not really the point of this. The point is to see how this uh, bar graph responds to the audio input. Now this looks like it's in a kind of bar mode, but it's not. It's in dot mode. And uh, perhaps I should start by trying to explain why it looks like it's in bar mode when it's in dot mode. So here's the incoming signal from the microphone. That's the zero volt line. We get some positive sort of stuff and then we get some negative sort of stuff. And what's happening is this uh, bar graph is tracking, it's following very quickly whatever waveform is being presented to it. So you'll get some uh, positive movement in on the bar graph. Now when it goes negative, the bar graph actually doesn't respond. So there's a large gap where the LEDs aren't lit up at all, and that's what's giving rise to the flicker. But the fact that it's following the ups and down movement of this signal, and this is a quite a fast signal, it's audio frequency, means that you're seeing this LED dot really at all positions at the same time. So it's a persistence of vision, which gives rise to uh, this effect, where it appears that it's in bar graph mode, but it isn't. It's actually in dot mode. Right, so now let's um, introduce the uh, peak detector, the precision full wave peak detector. So what that's going to do, it's going to take the negative part of the signal and flip it so that it becomes positive, and then take the peak value of that signal and display it on the LED. So let's move this little wire. If I take that off, actually, it goes to the top LED. So there's obviously quite a lot of noise floating around in this system. Right, let's plug it onto there. And uh, now we have a proper peak detector. And you can see how there's a uh, time constant here. It takes a while for it to decay down. If I tap the microphone, you can see how it uh, reaches up to the upper regions and then drops back at a CR constant time delay defined by this big capacitor. Uh, to, uh, 470 nanofarads and a 1k resistor. That's what's being charged by this circuit. 
I suppose the output, the low impedance output of this op amp is going through this diode, through the 1K resistor and into this capacitor. And we're simply looking at the voltage on these LEDs that's across this capacitor. Of course, these are logarithmic. So it takes quite a bit of speech effort to go into the red. Let me try it. OK, I'm going into the red now. And that uh, distorts. So the red indicators are correctly indicating that I'm going into uh, the distortion zone. Let's put some echo on there, because that actually helps to uh, see how that works. So I'm going so distorted. I'm going distorted. 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 And you can hear that my normal, hear voice, that my normal voice isn't distorted. Isn't distorted. But when I go into the red, it is distorted. Now, someone else asked, um, what is a negative power supply? So let me see if I can explain with these two batteries. Let's assume that the midpoint between these two cells, and they're both in series, pointing the same way, is ground. Well, then this point at the top will be plus 1.5 volts, and this point at the bottom will be minus 1.5 volts. But it's all relative. So let's assume that ground is this bottom point now. Well, now we have two positive power supplies, plus 1.5 volts and plus 3 volts. But you can just as easily assume that ground is up here, and now we've got two negative power supplies, minus 1.5 volts and minus 3 volts. So it really depends on your point of reference. And in a circuit like this, which is using plus 12 and minus 12 volt power supplies, ground is on this center point. And actually, you can see that I've done exactly the same thing with these two stacks of envelopes here, which are powering the karaoke board. One of these sets of eight cells, which is about 10 volts, is providing plus 10 volts. The other one is providing minus 10 volts. And the ground point is actually the central point between these two packs. So why do audio circuits need split power supplies? Well, imagine a microphone, which is just a diaphragm. Um, we'll do it as a moving magnet. So we've got a magnet here. I'll put north and south on there. And then there's a big coil wrapped around the outside. Well, when you speak against the diaphragm, this magnet will move backwards and forwards with the vibrations on the diaphragm. Now, if the magnet's moving in one direction, you'll get a positive voltage on this coil. Well, that's assuming you take uh, one as ground and the other as signal. So when it's, say, I don't know, moving in, you might get signal is positive relative to ground. When the uh, diaphragm starts to move the other way and it's moving out, signal will actually go negative with respect to ground because you're generating the vol a voltage in the opposite polarity. And if you want to faithfully transfer that signal, which is going first positive, then negative, through your audio circuitry and into the speaker, and the speaker will also move forwards for positive and backwards for negative, or it might be the other way around, then you need circuitry which has positive and negative supplies so that you can track that signal as it rises above the ground line and rises or falls below the ground line. But uh, I'm entirely happy with this now, so no more nasty uh, pseudo bar mode. We can now have the proper peak program dot mode. Let's move the wire across again. Take it out of there. Put it onto the output of my uh, precision full wave peak detector. Now we've got a proper peak detecting peak program meter. And uh, did you notice this rather awesome capacitor? It's actually color coded two, two, uh, yellow, red, red, yellow. So it's two, two and four zero, so it's 220 nanofarads. I found it in a very old parts bin. It's absolutely fab, isn't it? So there we are. There's some more uh, vocoder circuitry built. The uh, peak program meter precision full wave peak detector uh, feeding the LM3915 bar graph. And so uh, the vocoder, vocoder is progressing. Is progressing. Is progressing. And uh, uh, now, uh, an answer uh, to that, that age-old age question. question. Why, Why does my does voice, voice sound better, better when I, I sing in the bathroom? Well, it's because the echo harmonizes with your first voice. 
So your voice and the echo add together to produce a harmony. So it sounds like many people singing. It's cool, isn't it? Cheerio.